Hello, I'd like to present our work, Digging for Fold, Synthesis-Aided API Discovery for Haskell. I'm Michael B. James, a PhD student at UC San Diego. Most programmers don't want to repeat themselves. If there's an API to do a job, it's better to use that instead. APIs reduce code repetition, but it's tricky to figure out how to use an API. We call this the API discovery problem. That is, with an idea of the function you want to write and given a library of functions, how do you find out what you need and put them in the right order to accomplish your task? We approach this problem in the Haskell programming language. Haskell, a strongly typed, highly polymorphic language, makes it easy to reuse code. Everything is so generic and easily composed together. But that genericity is like playing 4D chess. It makes finding the right API call or calls to use harder, because so many different API calls might fit together in so many different ways. Thankfully, Haskell already has a tool to help its users with this API discovery. Ask just about any Haskeller how they look for a library function, and they'll tell you that they use Hoogle. Hoogle is a search engine for Haskell that lets you look for a program by type. Here, I can search Hoogle for the list concatenation function in Haskell. I know it should have the type list A to list A to list A, but what's it called again? Ah, right, plus plus. But what if the task requires composing several function calls together into a snippet? Hoogle can only help if there's a single library function that does the job. Consider the task of removing adjacent duplicates from a list. So on the list 1121, we expect our deduplication ddup to output 121. In Haskell, I can write this snippet using functions from the standard library. It's both shorter and more idiomatic than writing it with explicit recursion. It works by grouping adjacent identical elements into non-empty lists. Then it maps over that list, extracting the first representative element from each group. DDoP's type is more complex than just taking a list to a list. It needs to be able to check for equality of elements, so we need what's called a type class constraint. Its type is eek a to list a to list a. To help programmers discover snippets like this one, we built Hoogle Plus, a tool for API discovery in Haskell. Its web interface is similar to Hoogle, but under the hood it uses program synthesis to search for compositions of functions from popular Haskell libraries. Here, I search for ddups type eek a to list a to list a. It returns synthesized programs as it finds them, and we can look through the results. I'm not sure about concat group here, so I can add an example to check. No, it should have returned the singleton list zero. And the next one returns bottom or crashes on the empty list, so that's not what we want. This third one, well, I'm not sure. So I can edit one of the examples and uh, change it to something that might show us. Alas, it's not quite right. When the type itself is too ambiguous, you can add an example. So I'll put in our running example, and this should return the list 121. And Hoogle Plus will search again with this type and test to return results fitting both. And the top result is the one that we want. Map head of group of x's deduplicates our list. In the rest of this talk, I'll highlight three main challenges we had to address to create Hoogle Plus. More specification variety, filtering results, and comprehension of those results. At the end, I'll discuss our evaluation of Hoogle Plus with a user study. How does the user communicate to the synthesizer which program they want? In a type-heavy environment like Haskell, searching by a type is quite natural. In fact, the synthesis engine powering Hoogle Plus requires a type to perform search efficiently, but Haskell types can get complicated. I mean, look at ddup and an example. ddup's type requires an equality type class to check and remove adjacent equal elements. A beginner might be uncomfortable with this or other complex types. They might instead be more comfortable providing a couple input-output tests. They may provide one, two, one, one, and another on a list of characters. But how do you infer likely type specifications from tests? For the user, Hoogle Plus makes this easy. The user doesn't need to include a type. They just put their tests in as their search specification. Then they search, and Hoogle Plus offers some types that they could have meant. And there, in the second result, is the eek type that we want. But how does Hoogle Plus do this? To see how Hoogle Plus approaches this challenge, let's look at those two tests. 
we can make a lattice of the possible generalizations of each of those tests. At the bottom is the most precise type for each test. We can begin to generalize each, so each test can generalize on each side of the function, and each side from there, and so on. Oh, wait, there are type classes too. Wait, stop, too many types. This lattice gets out of hand very quickly. How are we supposed to find the best types to show a user? The ones highlighted from all of this. We search for those most likely types in three parts. To understand, let's simplify this lattice a bit without type classes for now. Our goal is to produce a list of types the user most likely meant by their tests. So first we can get all the types more general than both tests. And then the most specific of those is usually a good place to start. This is the least common generalization, and will be a good type to consider in our list. While this is a reasonable type, it's not the only type the user could have meant. Look at this type, list of b to list of a. In Haskell, there's no way for a function like this to be useful. A list of b's can't produce a list of a's, except for a trivially empty list. So those b's couldn't be used at all, having no effect on the output. And there were no a's in the arguments, so there's no way for the output type to have been produced. We make a fundamental assumption that the user wants to use every argument in a function, and that they don't want a constant function. Following this ideology, we filter away types that don't meet two criteria. First, the arguments need to be relevant in the result, so this type is out because b doesn't appear in the output. Second, a result type variable needs to be reachable from the input. So this type is out again because a isn't in the inputs. And now we add the type classes back. Ord of a to list of a to list of a becomes the new least common generalization. And then there are some generalizations on the right and more on the left. We filter away types like list of b to list of a and others that are not both relevant and reachable. These are the types in the lattice we're left with. We then need to rank the types so that we can show the top five types to the user. We use three heuristics in our ranking. The details of those are in the paper. So to approach this specification problem, Google Plus lets a user search by a type or infer a type from their tests. Our type inference works in three phases. We generalize the test types, filter them for plausible types, and rank the remainder. We can search for the type of our ddup function by first searching with our tests, and indeed, ddup's type is among the results. Although, having the right type is no guarantee that the programs synthesized will be actually appropriate. Now imagine the user is searching for ddup by its type, eek a to list a to list a. Notice, however, that most of these results are sort of intuitively irrelevant. One always crashes, like the one with head of an empty list will always crash even if it has the correct type and the other irrelevant result is a duplicate of another. So how are we to filter away irrelevant programs systematically? Deciding if a program crashes all the time is undecidable. It's also undecidable to figure out if two programs are equivalent. We realize that filtering need not be precise. It's better to miss a few relevant results sometimes than overwhelm the programmer with the sheer number of irrelevant results every time. So, we use an approximate filtering technique using property-based testing. For this, we use smallcheck, which takes a property and then iterates through all possible values up to a certain size to check the property. It can tell you that either a property holds or that it doesn't and give a counterexample. We test any program Google Plus produces with smallcheck for two properties. First, we make sure that some input produces any output, which rules out the head empty list program. Second, we make sure that there is some input that produces different outputs between two programs. So smallcheck cannot find any way to distinguish these two programs, so it rules out the second one. Put together, these two properties, testing for output and testing to distinguish programs, allow us to overcome our challenges to filtering away irrelevant programs. They ensure the programs we present to the user are of a higher quality than without. We can remove programs that fit the type but otherwise cannot possibly be worth the user's time. Next, we look at how users can comprehend the programs they get back. On our running example, without any sort of usability aid, a user would get a list of programs back, but they'd be asking themselves, are any of these right? Or how are each of these different? Or what about their edge cases? So how do we help users pick the program that's right for them? A user could be asking many different questions about the synthesized programs. Our tool, 
Google Plus empowers users to answer their questions by giving them the information they need to support many styles of understanding new code. On this same query, with the same synthesized programs, the user can use Google Plus to try their own input on a program, getting a feel for that program on their own. We also present the user with examples generated during the program filtering stage. These can show off how programs differ, and about edge cases, like one input when this program returns bottom, or crashes. They can also ask Google Plus to come up with more examples for them, to better understand how one program acts on different inputs. If they saw an example they liked, they could add it to their search specification and try again. For details on how we generate more examples, check out the paper. In addition to input-output examples, we provide documentation about the components used in a program so the user can get a better understanding of what the library functions do. We evaluated the overall experience of using Google Plus with a user study. We wanted to know, does our synthesizer help functional programmers solve their program search tasks compared to traditional methods? We also wanted to know, how do users of Google Plus specify their search intent? First, we had to choose the appropriate traditional method. So we asked 150 Haskell developers what their traditional method is for code snippet searches. The vast majority of Haskellers preferred to search for small code snippets with Google. Google was the next most popular with a few people relying on other services like Stack Overflow. Well, that's good. We kind of went all in on the Google Plus thing. With the choice of control settled, we gathered a group of 30 users in our study. They had a range of skill levels with Haskell. 12 had less than one year of experience with the language, 10 had between one and six years of experience, and the remaining eight were experts with seven or more years of experience. A little about the diversity of this group. 22 were in academia, eight from industry. There were 24 men and six women. We created four tasks. We'll call them A, B, C, and D. Half of the participants went through a training task, then completed tasks A and B with Google. After another training task, they did C and D with Google+. The other half of participants had the tasks reordered, first doing tasks C and D with Google, then A and B with Google+. The tasks stressed different key parts of program search and discovery in a highly polymorphic language like Haskell. One task required Haskell-specific data types. Another required type classes. This task was the ddub function we've been using. The other two tasks required thinking about higher order functions. A task consisted of a card with a high level description of the function, along with one input output example. A participant then used either Hoogle or our tool Hoogle Plus to search for and write a function matching the description. We measured the task completion rate for each tool and the time to complete each task. Of the 60 tasks attempted with each tool, 29 tasks were completed with Hoogle and 44 with Hoogle Plus. That's a 51% increase in completion rate with statistical significance. That is, participants equipped with Hoogle Plus completed 51% more of their search tasks than with Hoogle. We also looked at the time to complete their tasks. Considering only completed tasks, Hoogle Plus offered a modest 15 second improvement overall in our eight minute timed tasks. The differences intensified per task, but looking at just one on task A, participants with Hoogle took on average 5 minutes 46 seconds to write their program, and Google Plus users took on average 4 minutes 14 seconds. That's more than a 90 second improvement. We suspect this is because with Hoogle, it was hard to break the task down into intermediate types to search for, but this played to our tool's strengths. What about our other research question? How did Google Plus users give their specification? In such a heavily type-driven environment like Haskell, do users rely just on their types, or do they include a test? The data was quite clear on this. Overall, the 30 participants made 115 searches on Google+. Of those, only 22, or 19%, were type only. The remaining 81% of searches involved at least one test. So, even in this type-heavy environment, users still prefer to search for code snippets with a test in mind. Looking into those 81% of searches with a test, Many of them didn't even have a type. 42% overall, a plurality of searches with a test did not have a type. This effect was more pronounced among our novices who had less than a year of Haskell experience. Of all searches made by novices on Google+, 19% were with a type alone. 27% had both a type and a test, and a majority, 
54% of searches had no type at all in their specification. These users relied heavily on our type inference algorithm to complete their search task. One participant left saying that they didn't solve any of the tasks Google Plus did. In conclusion, we present Google Plus, a synthesis-aided API discovery tool for Haskell. Google Plus empowers users to complete more API search tasks compared to Google as identified through our user study. We needed to overcome three challenges to create our tool. We widened the style of specifications possible for our type-directed synthesis engine through our novel algorithm to infer likely type specifications from tests. We filter away irrelevant synthesis results using property-based testing. Lastly, we support many styles of comprehending synthesis results by providing automatically generated examples. Google Plus is available for you to play around with at hplus.programming.systems. Thank you.